Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer. For this video, we're going to look back at the month of June, what books I read, and a brief description of what I thought of them. I will do a more in-depth video on each book that I read in June, but let's keep it brief for this video, because there's quite a lot of books to get through. In June, we had June Pride Month, where I read books that celebrated everything LGBTQI+. Amongst that, I read other books as well. And I also started reading the books from the Miles Franklin Literary Award long list. And each of those books will have a book review on my channel. June was a busy month for me for reading. Let's look at all the books now. The first book was The Outsider by Stephen King, and I did rate this five stars. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was fantastic. Just everything about it, the characters, the mystery element, it was thrilling, it was suspenseful, and we had Holly in there as well, that Holly character, and she's a brilliant character, one of King's best characters, I think. A great book. If you haven't read it yet, I suggest reading it. Even if you don't like Stephen King, I think you'll like this book. The next book was Son of Sin by Omar Sakar. It was an interesting book, not fantastic at all. It's interesting because the main character is Muslim, and it's interesting to see a gay viewpoint from a Muslim family and just that culture and, and and that background. I thought that made it an interesting read. If you're interested in books like that, give it a go. The next book is The Intoxicating Mr. Lavelle by Neil Blackmore. This was the second book for June Pride Month. Um, it was quite a good read. I really enjoyed this book. Not a perfect book, but the characters were really well written. It was very engaging, and it really drags you into the plot. I thought almost everything about this book was perfect. It's almost a perfect book. I really do suggest people read this. It is, it's got some really great scenes. It's quite fast paced as well. Um, it's worth to go. The next book was Run Rose Run, written by James Patterson and Dolly Parton. I love Dolly Parton, and I had to grab this book and read it just because Dolly Parton is the co-author. It's not a great thriller, so it's advertised as a thriller. I didn't think it was a thriller much at all. I think it's more of a rags to riches story. That's how I saw it, and a romance story thrown in there as well. So for me, it wasn't a great book. I was disappointed with it, but I think if it was marketed as a rags to riches romance kind of drama story, I think that would have been a better way to market it, because that's what it is. Naked in Death by J.D. Robb was the next book. It's the first book in a very long-running series. I've never read the series before, so I thought, why not give it a go? I mean, why not add another series into the list that I have to read through? Because I've already got so many that I'm trying to get through. It's an okay book. I did like the fact that it's a um, crime mystery novel that's set into the future. That really interested me, and that's probably the main draw card for me. The main character is good, has really good history and background element as well. I didn't really like the whole, um, main suspect and that whole relationship that was building. I didn't think that was wonderful in the book, but I can see there's some room for movement in that series for those two characters. But I will continue on with this series, and I'm hoping that future books in the series will be as good or better. Win by Harlan Coben was the next book. I didn't really enjoy this book at all. I found the Win character just annoying and really hard to engage with as a main character in a book. It's better with that character is not the main character. I didn't really enjoy this. I don't really think I would read another book in this series if Harlan wants to make this a series. I don't think I would continue with it. I'd probably read his standalones more and maybe go back to the other series he's written where this character played more of a support role. Out of Sight by James Patterson and Brendan Dubois was the next book, and I love this book. I rated it five stars, and I've got a video to go on my channel soon. It's all there ready to go. It just needs to slot into the timeline. I thought the characters, I thought the plot, the way this book is written, it seems well planned and well executed. There's a line in the first paragraph, I think it is, that drags you in as a reader. And that's, for me, I just got dragged in straight away, and it doesn't let you go. It's really fast-paced, really well-written, great characters. There's a hint that it should be the first in a series. I hope it is, because I would read the next one in the series straight away. 
Another James Patterson book next, this time co-authored by Sean Serafin. It's called Three Women Disappear. This was another five-star read for me, and I've got a video there to go up on my channel again. It's just not there yet. I thought this was a great book. Again, very good plot, very well executed. It seemed well planned. The characters are really good. The whole mystery element was just perfect. Keeps you guessing all through the book. It is a very short story, so in the book it has this as the main story, then another story added on. So I didn't read the extra story because it wasn't related to this book, but this story was about 250 pages from memory. Great book though. They put so much into such a short book. I think anybody would love this book. If you like mysteries, like thrillers, even if you don't like James Patterson, give this a go. It is a great book. Keep This to Yourself by Tom Ryan was another book for June Pride Month. This was a good read. I thought the mystery was really well done. It's a young adult, but I thought the mystery was just superb. It kept me hooked. It was almost a perfect read for me, and the characters in this book are really well written. The author had a really good grasp of teenage characters, in my opinion, and there was a whole sinister feel to it, because it has this thing about a serial killer from a year ago in the timeline, and you just get a sinister feel all the way through it. It's always in the back of your mind when you're reading this. And I thought that was just a clever way to write this book. A good book. Something Fabulous by Alexis Hall was the next book and another June Pride Month book. I rated this five stars and I think the video for this is up on my channel. It was just a mad book. It's so madcap. It's like a farce really, but the characters are just so outrageous. Everything's outrageous in this book. Everything about it was almost perfect. There's one character that I didn't like that much, but everything else was just really well done. There are some explicit scenes in this book, so it's not for everybody. I didn't expect scenes like it when I first started reading it. I didn't think they would be in there, but they are. But I thought it was still a really good book. It was just so fun, so outrageous. I laughed out loud in a lot of moments. A really good book by Alexis Hall, and I think I'd read more by this author. Darius the Great Deserves Better by Adib Karam, another June Pride Month book, young adult book as well. It was a good read. The characters are just really well crafted in this book. I hadn't read the first in this series, so there's a book prior to this, but I didn't think I missed anything by not reading the first one yet. The characters in this book are just so well done. Every character the main character is so introspective, and I think the author did a really good job of just capturing characters from all different ages, both male and female, just so perfectly, and many authors can't do that, especially when authors try to write characters in their teens or younger. They struggle with that, I think, but this author did a great job, and it is a really good book. Cycle of Hatred, written by Keith R.A. D. Candendito. This is the first Warcraft book, well, World, World of Warcraft book, I should say. I'm going to read them all, or try to. I thought this was a good book. I think if you don't really know World of Warcraft that well, you may not get much out of these books. It does require some background knowledge of World of Warcraft first, I think. That's my impression. You probably still enjoy the read, but there are probably some things you may miss. You may miss out some key things about certain places or certain characters, and maybe just little things that are said, you know, throughout the book here and there. It's a very short book, but it was engaging. It was interesting. I think it could have been better. I don't think it was perfect by any means. So it's just, just above average in my opinion. But if you're a World of Warcraft fan, if you haven't read the books yet, I suggest you do start reading them. And I'm going to, I've started from book one. I'm going to go through all the books in the series. 100 Days by Alice Pung is the next book, and it's the first Miles Franklin Literary Award longlist book that I read this month. I thought this was a really good book. It's not perfect, but I am glad I read it, and I'm glad I'm going through the long list as well. This book was interesting because the characters are just so cleverly written, and the character growth is amazing in this book. I think for character growth... I haven't read many novels that would exceed that the way these characters are written in their growth, if that makes sense. I think the author did a really good job of getting them from point A at the start of the book to point B at the end. That element was the best part of this book. 
some of the situations, some of the things that happen seem a bit far-fetched, but when you get the history of the characters and when you tie those two things together, it seems to gel. It does seem to make sense. And I think it is quite a interesting and special book, and I think you should give it a go if you get the chance to. And Dean Kuhn's book was next, and this one was called Elsewhere. I had high hopes for this book. The blurb sounded really interesting, but it disappointed me a lot. And I get a sense sometimes with Dean Kuhn's books, especially the later ones, they're a bit hit and miss for me. Some I really like, and there's a lot that I don't. His earlier works I liked a lot, but this one just left me a bit disappointed and it just didn't deliver with all things that were promised. And I think Dean Kuntz missed out on some chances in this book to give us more in-depth sci-fi elements. And I don't think Dean Kuntz writes children very well most of the time because the child character in this book just felt like she was actually in her 30s. That's what it felt like. And it kind of spoiled the read for me as well with that character. Private by James Patterson and Maxime Pietro was the next book that I read in June. It's the first in a series. On the whole, this was good. There are three main storylines going through, three main cases they're investigating. I think they could have got rid of one, because one was quite boring in my opinion. They could have kept two that were more interesting and fleshed them out a bit. If I had done that, it would have been a better read, because the third case distracts from the other two too often, and I just found it not interesting. It could have been a, other ways to bring other characters into this book without having that third case. So I hope as I go through this series, they will have better cases and not trying to put too many things into the one book. The Summer of Everything by Julian Winters was the next book and another Pride Month read. I thought this was an interesting read. It's a young adult novel again. The characters were okay, but I thought there was too much melodrama in this one, and I actually enjoyed some of the other characters better than the main character. There are other things in this book as well that didn't gel with me, just choices I think the author made. But the overall story, so it's a slice of life story, it's not a mystery, it's not a thriller, it's just a slice of life story with a bit of romance thrown in as well. But it is a good read, and I think people should give it a go. The Performance by Claire Thomas, and this was the second Miles Franklin Literary Award longest book I read for the month. I enjoyed this book a lot. It's so different from other books that I've read. So it's a book about three women who are watching a play, and the whole book is about their thoughts while they're watching the play, their thoughts about their own lives their past, their present, and their future. I think this book is really special. It's an amazing read, I think, and the, and the voices of the three characters are so distinct. I think everybody should give this book a go, and I think you will probably enjoy it more than you actually think you will. I did anyway. For the next book, I dove back into, well, recent history. So, From Doing With Death, written by Ruth Rendell. So I think this was written in the 50s. So we have to say it's a historic novel because it's written, what, 60, 70 years ago now? It was an interesting book, and if you can forget about the fact that it's written, you know, in the 50s and put yourself maybe in that time frame and think about what life was like back then, it's more interesting. Of course, it's not going to be as thrilling. Well, I didn't find it as thrilling as books that were written now, you know, or even a few years ago, because things have changed, times have changed. But it was still an interesting read, and the main character, Inspector Wexford, makes for a very interesting protagonist. And this is the series as well. So that's another series that I've started. This is book one. And I will continue on with the series, given a chance. So I did find the mystery element very interesting, and I did like the fact that because it was written so long ago, the investigators had to go out and do manual work, you know, pound the pavement, talk to people rather than relying on technology to help solve the crime. And I do like when books do that, so I found this quite a good book, and I will continue on with the series. The Investigator by John Sanford was next. I picked this book up 
because it was new, and also the author has written a long-running series starring another character. I haven't written anything by this author yet, but I thought because he also had another series that's going on for quite a while, this must be a good read. I wasn't as good as I thought it would be, and I found the main character a bit annoying, to be honest, and I found the book quite a bore. It's quite tedious. I will have a video going up on my channel about this, and you can make your own decision what you think about that book if you want to watch that video. But for me, it wasn't the best book that I've read, and I think it was one of probably the worst books that I've read in recent history anyway. Room for a Stranger by Melanie Ching was the next book. It's an Australian author. I haven't read anything by this author before, and I thought I'd give it a go. One, because it's Australian, and a new author. Let's try a new voice. It was interesting. It's about, basically, a, a woman in her 70s, and she had a recent break-in, and is a bit worried about living alone. And she hears about this service where she can rent out a room for a student to live in, and a student gets to live in there rent-free, but they have to do some work around the house every week just to make up, you know, for that for that rent-free living. In some ways, it didn't deliver on what it promised. There are some good things going on in this book, but I think it could be better, and it's still an okay read. Not perfect, just above average. But if it interests you, something like that, where you have somebody in their 70s, getting to know somebody in their 20s, and what may happen with that, give it a go. Look it up anyway, see what you think. The Other Half of You, written by Michael Muhammad Ahmed, was the next book, and this is also on the Miles Franklin Literary Long List. I will have a review of this going up on my channel as well. This was another book written by a Muslim author, and from a Muslim perspective. And it's quite interesting, because this one throws you right into the family life in a Muslim family. And all the characters in this family are written really well, and there's good character growth in this book as well. And you get to see what it's like for this character, main character anyway. He wants to do things he wants to do, you know, break out of the mould that his parents want to create for him. And you see that going on in this book all the way through. And you see some really interesting character growth. And it makes for some really interesting situations with the main character, his family, and also his wider community. I found it a fascinating book. It is the third book in a trilogy, I found out. But I hadn't read the first two. But I don't think you have to. I think this book stands on its own quite well. And I don't think I missed out on anything by not reading the first two yet. But I do plan to try to read the first two, because this book piqued my interest enough to make me want to read more by the same author. Anything But Fine, written by Tobias Madden, is the next book, and another Pride Month read. It's an Australian author as well. I thought this was a good book. Again, it's a young adult novel. It's very melodramatic, though. There's a lot of melodrama in this book, and I think sometimes it's overdone. But there are some times where the character is very dramatic and it makes sense. You can relate to that. So on its whole, the melodrama isn't always bad. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. But the characters are quite good. And there's one special character in this book called Amina, who is really special and was a standout character for me. And I thought she was such a positive character for teenagers who may want to read this book and for anybody really who wants to read it. I think this book is quite special and worth the read. The Dogs, written by John Hughes, was the next book I read. After I read this book, I found out that it was disqualified from the Miles Franklin Literary Award long list with allegations of plagiarism, and I did a short video about that on my channel. So it was disappointing that the book was cut. I didn't enjoy the book that much anyway, and I don't recommend it to anybody really, despite the fact that there's allegations of plagiarism going on, I just don't recommend it because I didn't enjoy it that much. I found it quite tedious, and there are so many things going on in this book that I don't think should be there. One of the things in this book is that every character I couldn't engage with. I didn't like any of the characters at all, and if you're reading a book and you can't engage with any of the characters, I don't think you're going to enjoy the read. The next book was Echolalia, written by Brioni Doyle. This was a really interesting book. 
It's another book that's on the Miles Franklin Literary Award long list. It's set in summer, in the middle of a drought. And in the whole book, the whole setting, there's so many descriptions about the drought. And there's a lake that's dried up, everything's dry, dusty, there's always descriptions of heat. It's in your face all the time. It's also almost like a gothic horror novel, and that part of it's written so well. It's basically two stories in one. So we have past and present. In the past of the book, we see the main character almost be haunted by the other characters in the book, and we see the breakdown of her mind, and that's the gothic part of it. And it's so interesting seeing this kind of gothic, sinister horror feel going on in a book set in summer in the middle of a drought because you wouldn't think the two would gel that well but in this book they do and the characters are really well written in my opinion it's not a perfect book but i enjoyed this read very much the next was scary monsters written by michelle de Crestia. i really didn't enjoy this book and basically it's two novellas so it's not one whole book and the two novellas have a link but if you blink you may miss that link it's very very small it's really about two stories that go nowhere really. One story is set in the future a bit, and I just didn't buy all the concepts the author was trying to bring into that future world. The other story was set in, I think around early 80s, start of the 80s, and set in France. And the main character is Australian. I found that one slightly better, but I thought just a lot of the things that go on with the main character and other characters in that story just weren't believable and they don't make sense. In the futuristic story, it was very dull, very tedious to get through. Everything felt robotic, even the characters, and I struggled to get through both novellas, to be honest. It wasn't a very good read for me, and in my opinion, it shouldn't win this award. The next book is Something Red, Something Dead by Eva Gates, and it's a return to the Library Lighthouse mystery series. This is book five in the series. I'm so glad I read another one in this series because I am enjoying this series so much. This is another good mystery. Unfortunately, my main character, or my favourite character, Louise Jane, doesn't appear very much in this book, but it's still a good book, and I do recommend this series very much. The next was Red and Buried by Eva Gates, again in the Lighthouse Library Mystery series, and again, another good mystery. Unfortunately, Louise Jane doesn't make big appearances in this book either. I'm not sure what's going on there because in the first four books in the series, Louise Jane was all over it. Even though she's not the main character, she was appearing everywhere. In books five and this one, book six, doesn't appear very much and it didn't make it as fun a read for me. Even though I liked the mystery element very much, I still enjoy this series and the other characters. It's still one of my favorite series that I've read. I think Louise Jane needs to be brought into the stories more. The next is The Airways, written by Jennifer Mills, and this is on the Miles Franklin Literary Awards long list. It promises a ghost story, a revenge story. That's what we get promised on the blurb. And if you've ever read anything about this book, you might come away with that impression before reading it, that is. Because after you read this, you won't think that. Well, I did not anyway doesn't come across as much of a ghost story at all. It's quite a boring read, in my opinion, and I just didn't like the way that half the chapters were structured, and how the sentences are structured, the writing, the language used, and I just thought, you've got to get through so much tedious detail and so much boredom to get to small snippets that might be interesting, and you don't find anything interesting in every chapter. So for me, it's a big miss. I don't recommend this at all. I read it because it's on that award long list, but I don't recommend it. The next book is Seven and a Half, written by Christos Siocles. It's another book on the Miles Franklin Literary Award long list. Another book that misses what it promises, in my opinion. I didn't think much of this at all. It's basically three stories intertwining into one book. We have an author who's going to seclusion to write his story. We have the author remembering his past and different things that happened in his past influence what he's writing, and we, then we have bits of the story he's writing. I found it quite a boring read, and, it, and I struggled to get through it. I did finish it, 
because I want to read every book that's on the Miles Franklin long list. And I also have an issue with not finishing books once I start. That's the only reason why I read this and finished it. I don't recommend it, to be honest, and I hope it doesn't win this award. The next book I read was Two Sisters Detective Agency, and it's a James Patterson co-authored book. This is another book that promised a lot on the blurb, but didn't deliver. And for me, I got a sense that the authors were trying to create a book that had a similar feel to the Janet Ivanovich Stephanie Plum series. You know, a mystery that has that irreverent feel to it, that all the events and all the characters, all the things that go on, aren't really lifelike. But you include them all because you hope that if you include enough of them, it makes sense in the book. But for me, it really let it down because I got tired of the Janet Ivanovich series and I got sick of that whole irreverent feel because it just became repetitive and it was just too much. And to get that again in a James Patterson book, I just felt it was a bit off. It didn't feel right. And the characters, for me, weren't all winners. A lot of the things that go on with the characters, I just didn't enjoy at all. So I was quite disappointed in this. And it became a series because there is a hint at the end that there'll be a second book in this series. If there is a second book, I don't think I'll read it. The last book of June is called A Death Long Overdue, written by Eva Gates, and it's book seven in the Lighthouse Library Mystery series. I enjoyed this a lot, but not as much as I enjoyed the other books in the series. Even though Louise Jane plays a bit more of a role in this one than books five and six, I still didn't enjoy this as much, and I think it's because the author dragged too many new characters into this book and they're just new characters for this book alone. And trying to bring in, I think it was about 20 new characters, just to have more suspects. I think that was a bit strange, and I think it might have been a bit lazy as well. And the mystery element was, wasn't as good in this book. It felt like, to me, there were no clues to the mystery, and the culprit was just brought out of thin air at the end. That's what it felt like. So for this series that is usually so strong, this book did feel a bit disappointing, even though most of the characters, the main characters, are still quite strong and I enjoy them. The mystery wasn't as good. There you have 31 books that I read in June. I feel quite exhausted just talking about them in this video. I don't know how I got through them all, but I did. I managed to. I enjoyed quite a lot of them. There were quite a lot this month that I didn't enjoy very much, and quite a few that I was disappointed in, because I thought I would enjoy them more than I did. But I guess that's one of the things about reading. When you crack open that book, you don't know what you're going to get. Even if you like the author a lot, you don't know if the book you're about to read is going to be a winner or a loser. All the books that I've spoken about in this video have either got book reviews already on my channel or they're coming up soon. If you don't want to miss out on any, check out my channel and subscribe.